Hello everyone and welcome back to Chaos Field here with your master of horror for the evening, lying in bed once. So, uh, last time you saw me get pwned in the face by the Horned Huntsman, and I'm just going to say one more time, that is the thing that will be waiting people who get cursed with the seven day Sadako curse. So, if I just, apparently, Tyser is delivering something, so I'm not exactly sure what. But I guess I'll find out soon. Oop, that happens every now and then. Uh, yeah, I've done. Oop. Hello. Uh, which door are you at? Front. The cabin. Ah, uh, okay. This is gonna be a bit of a flight back. Sign... You... No, I, I... I tried that in Somnir. They didn't like it. Um... <laughs> Sign your face. There, it's signed for magic. Here. Okay. It's not a trap chest. And I don't see anything underneath it. So. A heck ton of hoes and spades. And swords and pickaxes. And okay, I've gotten weirder things, I guess. Um. Okay then. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that here for the time being, so I can actually just hop back onto my broom. And head back. Ooh, it is a total eclipse. Hmm. So yeah, I've done a bit of rewiring, or rearranging at least, uh, around the uh, curse wiring section of things. And let me just switch this to build so I can actually see where I'm flying. About this altitude, nothing ever comes up other than the other than the occasional volcanoes. So I don't have too much to worry about. Uh, done a bit of uh, reorganizing, rewiring. I might do away with the whole dropper system. It was a fantastic suggestion, um, but I think the problem I'm going to have is if more than one person gets added to the curse in a single day, then I'm going to have to send multiple signals into the droppers. So if I have instead, say, a hopper system, and I just pause the hoppers in se and like and then unpause them in sequence, then I can move all of the all of the elements inside of a given hopper to the next hopper, and then just do that in a reverse order. So from day seven to day one, and then they'll all shuffle along nicely. Uh, don't know if I'll be doing that this episode. Uh, I kind of actually need to do something that's almost entirely unrelated uh, this episode, and you'll see what I mean once we get back. Uh, let's see, two thirds, so quite probably I will be able to get back in here before uh, Tyser and Miles decide to have a nap. Uh, this, by the way, has occasionally broken up. It's broken up a lot less now that we have the chunk loader, but. It's still not a hundred percent. Okay, so let me just hop down here and let us go by way of here, so we can go to oh, there. I love having those covers; they're very handy for like landing points. So in here hasn't changed much. I have started raising the roof a little bit because the huntsman is actually four blocks in height, not three, as I previously expected. And in here, we have our spawning chamber for the Huntsman. So I've got a drum here, which is uh, 256 buckets of storage. Uh, for fairly cheap, actually, just six steel and then a little bit of iron for a cauldron and two uh, iron pressure plates. I'd call that cheap, personally. 
and I've also got a heated redstone generator, which is the thing that I'm presently using to power my main grinder up in the, that direction. I don't actually, cause since I can hear the fire, I suspect we're not actually that far from it, which is a little bit worrying. Um, but in here, we have the 400 health huntsman that I safari needed at the start of our last encounter. And let's see, we should have quite a bit of power in here. Yeah, that should be enough. So I will flip this and you will see why I'm about to do, well, well, why I'm about to go and build what I'm about to go and build. So let's see, it should be coming up about, oh yeah, we're just running on the timer. There he is. Noise. And the grinders. And he's in now. Yeah. And then the, the, after that, the grinders just sort of get to work, albeit a little bit on the slow side most times. But occasionally you get double spawns like that, which is nice. And again. Yeah, you get that sound every single time one of them dies, as well as their standing noise there as well. And I'm not going to move too far away, because I don't know if he's targeting, if any of them are targeting me, but I don't want to see them teleporting out, which I discovered they could do when I was designing Gargander for them. So, add that to the list of Horned Huntsman abilities, they can teleport. But, uh, what they drop is the most interesting thing. You saw in the last episode that I picked up the drops from the, uh, downed Horned Huntsman. There you go. Uh, they're slightly refilling the stuff, but this is getting pulled out quite rapidly, so it's not too much of an anything. Um, they dropped demonic blood, wither skulls, and enchanted books. Now I couldn't tell you exactly what book I got there, but I think it was a fire. I, I think it was flame or fire. But uh, from putting that through the grinder, I now have a whole ton of demonic blood, metric hecaton of wither skeleton skulls, and a wide variety of what so far has been um, vanilla only enchanted books. So let me see, Silk Touch, uh, Sharpness, Fortune Free, I've got some looting around here I think. Yep, looting freeze. I can stick that on my fan, I get a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I also, by the way, had to go out for to get more redstone because I was really low and I managed to get over a stack of blocks of redstone. Uh, so I got a few interesting things and then these amazing Technicolor glasses, which for some reason I am always compelled to say the entire name of them whenever I'm describing them. And a couple of knowledge fragments, a couple of Famium swords. I don't think many people have touched Foundcraft lately. I think Gar was touching them, but uh, anyways, the reason that I bring it down here to show you that is firstly, it's awesome, um, and secondly, it's really noisy. So if someone like comes in here, I don't really want them to be hearing all of the noise. I want them to be in here, and then suddenly there's a huntsman. Uh, and they like have little idea that he was ever there, so it's like he's just appeared in the room. If I can, I'd love to try and get it so that the uh, the lights flicker or something. Like there's some kind of degree of lighting in here, and then the lights turn off, Huntsman appears, lights come back on. So he sort of shock scares there. And uh, oh, it is daylight, so the cover has sealed again. But uh, yeah, he's really noisy, so we're going to try and make a, a sound muffler from extra utilities. Fairly cheap to make. We just need a note block and a lot of wool, which I think we can do largely because we've been getting a bunch of um, a bunch of string from the cave spiders inside of our mob essence area over there. So let me see. We need sufficient wood to make a chest and a dot of redstone. To make the note block. There we go. And I'll plunk this back in here for now. Might as well shove those in there. Yep. I think I can use some of those wooden tools to summon lightning and stuff. But well, uh, well, to at least set it to night. But mm, interesting. I'm wondering if he specifically made those for me, or if they're the product of some kind of crazy crafting accident. Who knows? Okay, and that's nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just grab that extra one anyway, because we'll probably need it. Sound muffler. Now these are redstone controlled, so let's see if we have any spare sticks from the witches. 
you? Mm, no, we don't. Belch are in there, anyways. Uh, six zombie heads, too. Hmm. I haven't been wearing this very often lately, just because it's a lot easier, actually, to use the uh, XP extractor. Uh, let me see. I should first turn this on. Still getting a bunch of excess pearls, so I don't think we'll be going low on those anytime soon. As far as I know, Mr. Kieran Dave has yet to resolve his own personal issues uh, in terms of curses. So, um, keep an eye on his channel for when he actually manages to do that. And uh, so far, I think I'm claiming the victory with regards to who is the better witch. Uh, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, so now we get to find out which state I need this thing to have it. I need this uh, st thing to be in to shut these guys up. Ooh, that was an interesting piece of. Okay, hmm. so counter goes down. Are we seriously low on power? Oh, that's weird. Oh, that was just the work. Look at that, that is just lovely. You can barely hear them at all. So uh, I think Gar has one of these uh, over by his, vil his uh, villagers, <laughs> because they are really noisy as well. Uh, let's just stick that back here, I think. Uh, but yeah, they are, I think they're up to 3x3, three three, but they're definitely 4 tall, uh, which is fantastic, because that means even a jumping player, unless they have some jump boost like uh, Tyser's, uh, Tyser does on his power suit, will not be able to hit the same height that uh, the Huntsman generally stands at. So through here, uh, we can have a horizontal mistcraft portal at the top, which will allow us to send them on a command to wherever location we want to. In theory, we could use these things to actually like send them into uh, someone else's base, but uh, that's not my goal. Um, that would be one hell of a way to, pr to troll someone, but uh, that's not my goal. And we're just going to be mostly using it as uh, part of our, well, either our mobs, uh, our mob, our boss uh, arena down at the base here. Uh, let me see if I can take a look. It's pretty dark down there at the moment because we don't have any light. But uh, yeah, this place is kind of getting aired out a bit. I still need to make a lot more obsidian TNT, I think. But we're getting to sort of the degree of size where it could serve reasonably well as some kind of arena. Oh, I'm still having trouble getting rid of all of this lava. I don't know where it's all coming from, but it's evidently not getting picked up by the endothermic generator. Yep. Whoop, I'm in a hole. Yep, yep. And it, eventually I'm definitely going to uh, fill in the bottom here. I'm not exactly certain if I'll fill it with water or something water-like. Um, but definitely I want it to be somewhat appropriate of a gravity flooring to the well. Uh, let me just get up here. Because getting up a little level makes it a lot easier because the depth fog goes away exponentially. Uh, let me see there. Perfect. Okay. So we've got access to any number of Horned Huntsmen. We've got access to any particular enchantments I should ever possibly want. And we now... Oh, I should probably show off this as well. So I set up this... Uh, which has an overheated redstone generator because I have a lot of redstone, I have a hell of a lot of lava, and these produce quite a bit of power, so kind of handy. I'm just taking drums of lava next to them. Uh, this is purely so that I can get a ton of saplings. It feeds directly into our main uh, ME system at the moment. It might have its own special one later on, I don't know. Uh, and I also have this fertilizer thing here. I'm almost out of fertilizer, but it's actually not that expensive to make. It's mostly just wheat and bone meal. And I haven't managed to get hold of a skeleton, uh, skeleton spawner just yet, uh, so McCoy's fellows are perfectly safe for the time being. Uh, but that's, suffice it to say, not a very expensive thing. So I haven't been worrying too much about that. Have we got anything else over here? No, just some of my gubbins. Over time I just shoved more and more stuff into chests as I retrieved it uh, from the many graves that littered the place. Uh, so let me see, what else can we do today? Well, 
I would like to see my armor looking spiffy, so let's take a look at the different enchantments that we've gotten. And yep. And pick out some nice things to put onto my armor. So let's see, there's protection four, there's feather falling, knockback two, looting, unbreaking would be good. Power smites my protections. I think we can combine some of those. Uh, oh, and speaking of, there is a, another protection four. I think we can make a protection five, so that'd be fantastic. Oh, another protection four. Uh, feather falling three. Yeah, let's add that to our list. Blast protection, projectile protection, aqua affinity maybe. Yeah, put that on our helmet. Fawns. Yeah, if we feel like being a bit we a bit mean. Uh, looting, silk touch, another unbreaking. Power, punch, 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 flame, 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 infinity. I wonder what happens if you. If, I wonder if you can put infinity onto a hunter's handgun. Probably not, because that would be broken as all hell. Either way, okay. So we still have this uh, very damaged anvil. Uh, I don't know how long this thing's going to last, but uh, we'll take our chances and find out. Ferro falling four. Okay, we can put that on our boots, our diamond booties, which are looking a little bit on the worst side. Uh, can we make a protection? No, we can't make protection 5. Okay, well that's fine, we can just put protection 4 on a bunch of stuff then. Uh, and we have two unbreakings. I know there is such a thing as... Un no, apparently there is not an unbreaking 4. I could have sworn that was a thing. Hmm. Okay, so... On our necromancer's robes... Uh, let's see, we're going to want unbreaking, definitely. And we're going to want protection. So, keeps the undead at bay. Ooh, hang on. We should prob... I don't know exactly how this will behave with the repairing. Uh, but I have some impregnated leather running around. Only the three. Hmm. Uh, will this allow me to repair it? Uh, I think it needs to be over here. It's very particular about how you do this. Uh, I think it made four. But we can just repair it in anvil with normal leather if absolutely needed. So, protection four, and let's rename it because we have the levels. So, what should we call it? Robes of the Witch, perhaps? Or uh, the Witch's Robes? Hmm. Yeah, let's go with Robes of the Witch. So, there we are. Robes of the Witch keeps the Undead Bay. Protection four. And then we add on breaking, just to make sure that it sticks around longer than it usually tends to. Okay, we're now down to level 1, but now my lovely Cyan Necromancer's robes are all spiffy and shiny. What do you think, McCoy? Do I look nice? I think I look nice. <laughs> okay, so obviously I'm going to have to grind some more levels to put more enchantments on these guys, which I can probably do with, uh, like repairing as well, because I've got the materials. My steel legs I can probably just toss to the dogs, more or less, but I think I, I think they look nice. I mean, obviously, arm um, enchanted diamond armor leggings are going to be better, but I love the way that the uh, steel leggings look in this texture pack. It looks very fitting, I think. But, uh, ooh, we are actually almost out of time. Jeez, I can ramble for England, can't I? Um, okay, so yeah, I don't... apparently... Okay, in one of his most recent videos, Mr. Uh, Feyre mentioned that he's going to bring a meteorite down upon my house and then fill the well with lava, uh, with uh, cement. So, he's welcome to try, but uh, maybe next time we'll look at some defensive force field technology. Just maybe. Because, uh, you know, we're already got in, we've already got force fields in here that are just being used to move a, a stone cover. So, um, maybe that'll be worth looking into. But uh, with that in mind, I shall catch you all next time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and or a favourite. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe to be notified of future updates. You can also check out the website where most other content is uploaded. That's all for now, catch you later.